Hey everybody, welcome back. I am excited to say that today is the day. I finally found the time to film the children's apron video. Um, you, this, this apron fits anyone from uh, really a toddler up until, I've had a couple ap eight year olds wear them. You know, they get a little bit smaller in the front, but overall it's still some pretty good coverage. So you only need about two thirds of a yard um, of fabric for either side. So you can do the whole project for about a yard and a half. So it's very affordable, um, especially with the price of fabric nowadays it makes a great gift it's a good thing to sell in your booth they sell really well and um, I hope you like it and have fun and here we go okay so first things first um, we're going to learn how to make the pattern and just like I do with my um, adult awesomely easy reversible apron I cut all of my patterns on the fold of the fabric so we're, we're gonna have a pattern that comes out to be half the shape of your apron and you'll line it up on the fold when you cut it to make sure that your apron um, comes out symmetrical so the first thing we're going to want to do and normally I would do this in pencil but I'm going to use a sharpie just so you can see what I'm doing is we want our pattern needs to fit basically into a rectangle that is going to be um, 21 by 10 and a half inches so I'm going to mark off 21. Now, if you have um, a children's pattern that you like already, you can always just trace it. You know, that's a piece of cake and then follow all the same steps. Um, so we're doing 21 by 10 and a half. So here I have my 21. And then I'm gonna mark my 10 and a half. And if you want, oops, a little wonky. You could always cut this rectangle out to start, but it's really not that big of a deal. So the next thing we're gonna do is for the bib of the apron, we're gonna come in three and a half inches. And then we're gonna put a mark right here. Okay, this is gonna be the top bib part. Um, and then we're gonna come down to where the waistband is. We're gonna come nine inches from the top. Make sure you're measuring. This is the top, okay? It's always good to label. We're gonna come down nine inches from the top. We're gonna make a mark here. And then from the bottom, we're gonna come up five and a half inches and this is where the bell shape of the apron um, is gonna start. So normally I'd do this in pencil, that way I can mess around a little bit and erase it until I get what I want, but basically you're gonna wanna come, come in and just bring this curved shape like that, okay? Curve it out from here to there. As you can see, the first one, it's not curved enough. You've got to really think about this going under their armpit and out to the waist, okay? And you want it to be a little bit straighter near the waist, fell in, and then come straight up to that bib, bib part on the front, in front of their neck. So as you can see, that's gonna be my final line. Um, and then this part of the apron stays fairly straight. And from here, we're gonna connect this five and a half inch point down to um, the front. And this one, we don't, we, you know, we're gonna bell it out a little bit wider. We don't need as much of a cutout. Okay, so as you can see, here is my apron shape. And it's pretty, pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, as long as you get a nice little cut in here for the armpit, you know, and a nice little bell shape out there, you're going to be just fine. So the next thing we're going to do is just cut this out either with your rotary cutter or your scissors. If you have some really nice expensive fabric scissors, then I would recommend using your cheapy paper scissors because as we all know, uh, paper can really dull your fabric scissors. I don't mind doing it with a rotary cutter because if the blade's dull, I can always just trade the blade. Um, whereas scissors, you know, sharpening them is not so easy. So here we go, that's all we need. We don't need any pattern, unlike my um, 
some of my other um, apron patterns, we don't need any other pieces for the straps because all we're gonna do for the straps is we're gonna cut four pieces that are each 20 by two inches, okay? Always good to label your pattern, kids, apron, 20, 21, because there's some years where I do them um, differently than others. And if you want, you can put the dimensions on here. Three and a half, 21, nine, and five and a half, if you're that kind of person. But anyway, this is where we're gonna start with. So the next thing we're gonna do is um, iron it to our fabric. If you are using freezer paper, you can iron it to your fabric and it will stick. If you're just using regular paper, all we have to do is lay it down. Oh, the other thing that you would definitely wanna mark is this is your fold. Always remember that. So when you're cutting, you don't accidentally screw up and cut two mirror images as opposed to one piece folded over. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute when we get to cutting. Okay, before we get to cutting, I just wanted to make a few points about um, choosing your fabric and how much to buy. Um, you know, the length of this of this pattern is 21 um, inches. Now, uh, three-fifths of a yard is 21.6 inches. So three-fifths of a yard um, will get you as much as you need. But here's the trick. So if you're buying something like this, and I love this eggs and bacon print. It's left over from one of my Tina quilts. Um, I really wanted to make the apron out of this, and I know that I've I've managed to squeeze these aprons out of a pretty small scrap before, but unfortunately, because this is directional, as you can see, it goes in one direction, I can't adjust the way that I would cut this um, um, to save fabric uh, um, because it would make the print run sideways on the apron, which no little kid wants to wear a sideways apron. So I'm not gonna be able to use this one, now I have this piece here, these oranges, which honestly is fairly similar in size. I think it's, uh, let's take a look here. It's 21 inch, 22 inches long going this way. So it's just enough, actually, sorry, it's 21. Yeah, it's 21 on the button. So this one's just enough to squeeze my pattern in there. You know, if you're gonna lose a little tiny smidge on the top or a little tiny smidge on the bottom, it's not a big deal. Um, the trick with this is if I'm gonna cut it here on the fold, I have all this extra stuff left over. So what I would rather do is take my piece and I'm gonna fold it in like this and cut my cut my fabric just off of the one end as opposed to the center crease you know in the adult apron video i cut off the center crease because we need that whole yard of fabric um, for these children's aprons you know you don't want any fabric is not cheap so look at the difference with all this extra fabric that i have to work with um from you know from just paying attention to where I fold the fabric and the direction that it's running. The other trick is a fabric like this. This fabric is technically is directional, but it's loose enough that if I was working with scraps that I could cut it this way and run the, the direction of the fabric in the opposite direction. And I would probably have to trim just a little bit off the sides of the apron, but overall, you know, if I say I wanted to make a matching set for my granddaughters or something, and I had just one yard of fabric and I was really trying to eke it out, um, I would play around with it a little bit, um, even if it meant trimming off. You know, if you're gonna trim off just a little bit on the top here, which this is the easiest place to trim it off because it's a straight, straight line, um, it's not gonna affect the overall look of the apron very much. Um, the other thing to consider is, you know, I make all of mine reversible, so everything's mirror image, but if you don't have quite enough, like you're dying to use this really cute print, and you don't have quite enough to do the straps and the bib, just do the apron front out of the really cute one, and you can always make solid color straps or straps out of something coordinating. Now, a print like this is really your best bet because it doesn't matter which direction you run it in. So if you've got a scrap, you know, that's um, non-directional, that's definitely a great one to choose because you can cut it from either direction. The trick, you never want to cut, you would never want to cut fabric though on the bias or something like this. Um, it's going to stretch 
and chain shape. That's for more for garment making. There's certain projects that you would do where you would specifically cut something on the bias, which means diagonal. So for these projects, we want to keep them super simple. And as you can see, this, this one would be enough for me to do it this direction or this direction. Um, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and go with this orange one because I absolutely love it. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this to the ironing board and because I am using a freezer paper pattern, I will show you the benefits of using the freezer paper so that it actually sticks to your fabric and makes cutting much easier. Okay, so here I have my uh, piece that I've chosen for my backing fabric. Um, it's this nice crisp. Um, Moda, it's called grunge. Uh, the reason it's called grunge is because it has just a little bit of kind of like a scratchy texture to it. I like it. I've used it for a lot of stuff. Um, you know, it's more interesting than just a plain white. I tend to avoid um, using white in aprons because they get dirty, but honestly, this print is just so clean and pretty. I didn't want anything to distract from it, and I'm sure being a little kid, they're probably going to want to wear it on the, the pretty side anyways as opposed to the back side, which is not quite as exciting. So what I'm doing here is, as you can see, I folded this one over um, just a smidge on the end, just like I did with my first one. I'm going to line up the folds as best I can. Make sure everything's nice and smooth so it doesn't shift around. Double check, make sure you've got you know enough of a fold here that you're gonna catch all, all of the layers of fabric when you cut um, your pattern out. And then I like to use my Omni Grid ruler, um, not because I need a straight edge, just because it's got a little bit of weight to it and it can hold it down um, while I'm cutting. And this is an Olfa rotary cutter. Um, I really like this brand. Their blades, first of all, are way, last way longer. They're very sharp. Um, it's German steel. I've been using these for 20 years. This one I like especially because it's spring loaded since I work you know, in the daycare and sometimes the kids are around. Um, some of them, when you're using them, you push them out and they stay like this. That's extremely dangerous. So I like this one because it's got this feature. It also has a safety. So I never leave these laying on the table where the kids can get to them. They always go up back into my sewing area with the safety on. That way they're out of reach and if the kids try, you know, actually manage to get up and get into where my scissors are, which hopefully they will never ever will, um, they still won't be able to pop the blade out. Now mind you, I've had some pretty smart kids over the years that might figure out a safety. So if you work around kids, keep them up high. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna cut out my pattern, simple as that. And the reason I like to do it this way is because I know, because I laid these on top of each other, that my front and back of my apron are gonna line up perfectly because I'm cutting mirror images. And the beauty of the rotary cutter is it just makes it so much easier. They're nice and sharp um, and you just get those good clean lines. Now I'm just going around making sure I got everything. I probably need to change this blade. I've cut a lot of aprons this week and of course I've always cut tons of masks over the last several months. And while their blades do last a very long time, they don't last forever, that's for sure. So if that was a brand new blade, I would have just zipped right through a piece of cake. I wouldn't have had to go back over. So here we go. We've got our front, our front and our back. Okay, so here we have our fabric. I've folded it over just like I was showing you earlier so I don't have any extra waste. I'm just gonna line it up, make sure um, I've got enough, you know, over here that I'm not getting this salvage um, in the edge of my apron. Because if there's one thing you don't want is this adorable little apron and then this big white line down one side because you didn't pay attention. Um, again, like I said, this piece of fabric is very close. You know, if I lose a little smidge, it's no big deal. Um, I'm willing to lose a half an inch or so just because I love how cute this orange print is. And I am not going to the fabric store to buy any more fabric because I have so much left over from mask making that would just be ridiculous. So as you can see, I've got my iron on hot. It doesn't take much at all. Just press it on there. And if you're using freezer paper, 
because it has that shiny backside, it will stick. That little bit of waxiness gives you, it's not, you know, it doesn't leave any glue residue or anything like that. It's just enough to stick. Um, it's an old trick that people have been using, you know, when they do um, applique quilts for years. And I just, you know, decided to start doing that with all my patterns to make my life a lot easier. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, which is really the only other thing we need to do as far as cutting um, goes, is cut out the four straps. There's going to be uh, two for the waist and two for the neck. And I just do them all, for the kids' aprons, I do them exactly the same. Um, you know, my adult aprons, I put a little more um, flair into and a little more time and work because I sell them for $40, um, you know, and, and you want them to be feminine and pretty. Um, but for the kids' aprons, I only sell them for 20 bucks. So I try to make them as easy as possible um, so that I'm not you know, so I feel like I at least get paid for the amount of work that I've done. Um, each one of these straps, like I said, is going to be um, 20, 20 inches long by 2 inches wide. So I'm just going to cut four sets. My fabric, like I said, as you can see, is still stacked. So I'm still getting mirror images for each of these straps. I said now we have all this nice extra um, fabric left over that didn't go to waste it's not cut in some funky weird shape I could easily throw my baby bib pattern on here and make a bib right away and then you know how great is that to have you know if you have somebody who's in the booth and they're shopping for both of their children and one is a toddler and one's a little bit bigger you know you've got a bib for the baby and a matching apron for the older child and then you're way more likely to sell 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 plus if you end up making a mommy one you can always do something like a mommy and me special where what I do is you know they get the apron for 40 and they can get like the bib for half price but honestly I haven't been doing as much of that this year just because of COVID and the mask making and the aprons I mean sorry excuse me the fabric is so expensive I haven't been able to afford to wheel and deal as much with my larger projects like aprons as I would with the smaller projects like um, the masks okay so here we have our four strips and I'm just gonna measure down 20 inches and cut them all off across the bottom that out of there now the one little flare that I like to give my kids aprons is I do like to have the um, sashes you know um, come out at an angle so I'm going to and again we want to have mirror images so I'm gonna flip that one in flip this one in so that we have two matching sets that are mirror images and we'll stack them on top and then I'm just gonna slice off the corner little triangle and that just gives our you know our sh our sashes a little bit of a detail um, for the kids apron all right gang we are back at my um, sewing table and um, I've just taken the time to line up all sets of my four sashes with right sides together meaning pretty sides together so I'm just looking for that little grungy bit of white and lining them up and we're gonna go ahead and stitch about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You could use a quarter inch foot if you wanted, which is a foot that has a little um, plate right here that you line up with the edge of your fabric to make sure you sew um, a perfect quarter stitch every time. I don't worry about that. I would prefer to just run it off the side of my presser foot. I sew too much to bother um, changing feet in and out for something that simple. Um, anyways, I am going to, like you just saw, I'm back stitching and then stitching forward just a hair, just so the, uh, the um, thread doesn't come unraveled. And we're going to come all the way down and around and end back here at the other uh, side of the opening. What we're doing is we're stitching these right sides together, and so they're going to be um, inside out, and then we're going to turn them right side out, and then we're going to stitch again and put a nice little detailed stitch on there um, to give it a finished look. If your fabric starts to shift, just stop and adjust. You could pin this if you wanted to. If you're nervous about sewing without pins, by all means, go ahead and pin it together. But you know, 
I found that fabric for the most part has enough of a, a little bit of a texture to it that it holds itself together fairly well without pins. And then you don't have to worry about um, sewing over a pin accidentally or start stopping and starting every time you need to pull one out. As you can see, when I'm turning the corner, I'm going to turn the corner with my needle down. That way I can't accidentally pull this out of the machine. So I'm stopping and starting in the same spot. If I had pulled my needle up and yanked this out, then I'd have this long tail of thread I have to go back and um, line up. And as you can see, you know, I'm not quite up on the edge of my presser foot here. It really doesn't matter. This doesn't, it's not rocket science. You don't have to have a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. It doesn't have to be perfect the whole way. As long as it's nice and straight, it's gonna come out looking good. Seriously, the six-year-old who's going to be wearing this isn't going to notice if one side is off by an eighth of an inch than the other side. So anyway, there we go. We're going to do that for all four um, straps. All right, guys, I got all of my um, straps um, stitched. And this next step is pretty important. You're going to want to do a little bit of quality control. You want to go and take a look at the seam um, down each of the lengths of the strap and make sure that you got a good bite of fabric on both sides. If you see a little spot like here, see in here where it's getting a little close to the edge, just go ahead and, and you know, start up here where your seam is nice and run a second stitch down just on the inside of that just to make sure you have enough um, fabric that when we turn these inside out you're not actually gonna accidentally gonna pop that loose so I've gone ahead and as you can see I just ran a second stitch no big deal um, I tend to sometimes cut these ends a little too short also so I can always go in and just run a second stitch here as well see just like that I'm not gonna bother going in and seam ripping anything nothing like that um, the next thing we're gonna do is take your scissors and you're gonna want to cut off these little corners just to reduce some bulk um, for when we turn it inside out. So you're going to do that to all four of them. Make sure you don't accidentally um, snip your thread. So you can see how close I am there, hopefully, that it's got a little bit of wiggle room, um, but not so much that we're going to have a problem. Okay, so this next step's a little tricky. Um, which you're going to want to get something like a chopstick. I prefer a knitting needle. Um, you could use uh, the end of a long paintbrush or even a very, very dull pencil. You don't want anything too pointy. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn these inside out. Um, and pro tip, lick your fingers and just kind of give it a wiggle like that um, to loosen the fabric up. And then I usually take my thumb and gently start to turn it inside out. And then once I get it started, this is the reason I like the knitting needle is I can use this blunt end and get it up in there and turn it inside out. Just like that, see? So now we need to poke out the corners. Another reason I like the knitting needle because it's got a little bit of a point to it but it's not too sharp and just be gentle you don't want to accidentally poke through your seams. That's what I was talking about earlier when I said cut your corners, but not too close. So you're just going to poke it out like that. We're going to do this with all four of them, and then we're going to go to the ironing board and make them nice and flat. Okay, here we are at the ironing board. Um, I've got all my sashes, and you're going to want to grab your um, whatever you're using, your chopstick, your knitting needle. Um, you know, the technical term is long pointy thing. Um, and this will make it way easier when you're trying to iron these out nice and flat. So I've already poked out the corners and I like to stick my, as you can see, I've got it down in there. And this is one of the reasons I love the knitting needle is because it's metal. So it's not going to melt if I accidentally hit it with my iron, you know, avoid something plastic. Wood or metal is definitely better. And I'm just very gently sliding it along the inside seams, um, trying to press them out a little bit. And as you can see, I'm using my hand to continue to smooth and then I'm gonna use the iron and go down the length of the strap. Just like that. Now, if you're having a problem, if your fabric is like not smoothing out, if it's you know really wrinkly, you could spritz this with some water if you want just to get it 
um, nice and crisp. Okay, so we're gonna do that um, for all four straps. All right, now I wanna talk about um, choosing your, um, your detail thread. So we're gonna do a small, you know, a little quarter inch stitch around the edges of each of these straps just to hold them, you know, nice and secure so they last for a really long time and also give it, you know, just a clean finished look. Um, and I was trying to decide what colors I wanted to use. You know, there's lots of greens, there's this pale, pale kind of uh, pink color, obviously white, there's some black in here. And originally, you know, I was thinking I would use this kind of like blush orange that I have, this kind of a mix of orange um, and pink. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking a close look at it up here on the fabric, um, you know, on the front and the back, trying to decide if I like the way that looks. Now, if you are concerned about having wobbly stitches um, that you'd rather people not see, then you'd want to pick a, a, a thread, probably something neutral like a white or a silver um, that kind of blends in, and that way people won't see your stitches. But I, you know, really like to add this little detail, and it can really make the fabric pop. Um, you know, I, I don't have a ton of these pale greens. I was looking at this kind of lime green. I think it's a little too bright. You could always use just a contrasting complementary color. You know, this teal um, color, this pale blue is really pretty. But honestly, when I was looking at it, I really like the way the yellow looks. You know, it's citrus fruit. It's got some yellow in it. Um, I just like the, there's not a ton of yellow in this fabric, but... Um, you know, I really like the way it looks. There's a little bit in here, and when you put the yellow thread on it, it really just jumps out. So I'm gonna go ahead and use yellow for my um, detailed stitch. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead here and thread my machine. Now, the other option is you could use more than one thread color if you wanted to. You could put a color um, in the bobbin thread and, you know, a color on the top thread and have um, the front and the back of the apron really looking um, different but that's totally up to you. I find it easier to do it this way. I've done it that way before just for fun, um, but this way, you know, if I'm using the same color, I don't have to worry about accidentally stitching on the wrong side of the fabric and, you know, messing up the little effect I was going for. Like I said, usually when I'm making these, I'm making large piles of them, so I try to make it as easy as possible on myself um, not to screw up. <laughs> so anyways, just like we did before, I'm going to go ahead and run off the edge of my presser foot and uh, back stitching just a tiny bit and we're going to come down and around and back up. Again, put your needle down when you turn the corner so you don't lose your space where you were stitching. Sometimes it will narrow out a little bit here at the end of the sash. That's not a big deal. Um, you can always just take your chopstick or whatever you're using and poke it out, push it down with your finger, and stitch it shut. If you're worried about it, it really won't matter that much just because this end of your sash is gonna be tucked inside your apron anyways. Here's a little close up so you guys can see how nice that yellow ended up um, looking um, as the detailed thread. And like I said, there is some tiny little bits of yellow up in there, you know, and it definitely pops on the white side as well. So I'm super happy with the way um, this has turned out. Okay, gang, so believe it or not, we only have two stitches left. Um, if you've got really long threads on the end, you can go ahead and just um, trim them off with your scissors. Doesn't need to be perfect. There we go. All right, we are going to take the front of our apron, so the side that is your favorite, and lay it out nice and flat. And then you're going to take two of your um, mirror image straps. And here's the trick. I want, when the child wears the apron, I want white straps with oranges. So if she flips it over on the back, 
the back of the apron will be white apron with orange straps. That way, either, either side she wears it on is going to be adorable. So, um, because we are fixing these straps inside the apron before we sew it, we need to make sure that they are in the right direction so when we turn it inside out, um, we see the straps that we want, the color, the side of the strap that we want. So, it's going to be a lot, it's backwards than what you think. So, I want the oranges facing up and I'm making sure that I have two mirror image straps. I don't want two that look the same side by side. So I've got two, two mirror image straps. I'm going to place them about an inch, maybe a little less than an inch um, from the edges. And I'm going to pin them in place. I am not going to put my pin up here because I don't want to accidentally run over it with my sewing machine. So I'm going to put it close enough to the top that my uh, strap isn't shifting around, but far enough down that I'm not accidentally going to hit that needle um, with my sewing machine. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold them up. The only reason I do this is so that I don't accidentally um, stitch along the bottom edge and catch the tail end um, down here because that would not be fun to seam rip out and um, have to fix. So I'm just doing this. It's a little extra precautionary measure. So it stays out of the way of the bottom when I'm sewing around that edge. So I'm going to do the same thing with my side straps. Again, I'm just going to come down a little bit because we're going to be sewing around this edge by at least a quarter of an inch and I don't want to accidentally sew over the strap. I want the strap to be fixed on this seam, not this seam. So I'm going to come down, like I said, not quite an inch. Line them up. Pin them in place and as always, I'm using glass headed pins. Um, that's my standard because I iron with pins a lot and if I hit my iron with this pin, even though I don't have to do any of that in this project, in many other projects I do, like the masks, um, and if I accidentally hit the, the iron with the pin, it's not going to melt um, the head of the pin onto my fabric. So I'm putting one there in the middle just so it's, you know, the straps aren't going to shift around um, on the inside of the apron. And if you're interested in glass headed pins or any of these products I use, the, the cutting table, the, uh, the Ulfa cutter, all that, I'll put links down in the description. Now, I have my back side. I'm, again, we're going to put right sides together, so pretty sides together. So I'm looking for that little scratchy grunge detail to make sure I've got it. And then I'm just going to line this up. nice and neat. As you can see, it's off by just a little bit. It's off by a hair. Um, you know that, let's see. I just wanted to make one quick note to you guys. If you don't mind adding a second step and you prefer not to use pins inside your apron, you could always take this to the, to the sewing machine now and just put a stitch in here a stitch in here, a stitch in here, and a stitch in here to hold them in place, then place the second layer on top, pin it down like I showed you, and stitch around the outside edge. You know, sometimes that's easier because you don't have to go in and pull the, the pins out from the inside. Um, I just do it that way because it saves me a, a one step from having to go from the table back to the sewing machine. But either way you do it, it's up to you. Okay, so here we have our apron. And like I said, we're gonna stitch around the outside edge. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna peel this back, make sure my strap is in place where I want it, make sure my pin is nowhere near where I'm gonna be stowing. I'm just going to stitch over and back this strap to start, just to hold it in place. All right. Now, I'm going to jump down from there enough 
so that when I turn this inside out, I can get about three, three or four fingers in there. Um, you don't want it so big that you have this giant gap, but you don't want it so small that you can't turn the bulk of the apron out. So I'm going to give myself, you know, like I said, about three, you know, three or four fingers width. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to back stitch, and then I'm going to continue all the way around um, the entire circumference of the apron um, using my presser foot as a guide. Stopping to pull out any of your hair. <laughs> or dog hair. Or cat hair. two more there you go. and then when I get up here to the strap I'm gonna make sure that I back stitch over it like I said um, just to give it some extra strength because you know they they do get a lot of stress on the straps Hi. do the same thing with the top straps. Now when you're coming across the top you want to, um, this is the one spot where it's important to slow down and try to get a really nice straight line. That's the only straight line in the whole, you know, pattern that really matters because that's the one going right across your chest so people are going to be seeing that. You know and if your if your uh, pieces shift a little like this it's not that big a deal. You do have a little bit of bulk in here which is going to lift this top layer up some. You know smooth it out as best you can but it's not it's like I said it's not a big deal as long as you're catching you know a nice bite of both layers of fabric. doesn't have to be perfect to be cute. Okay, so we're gonna take out the top layer of pins. Come here. And then we're gonna reach our hand inside and pull out the pins connected to the sashes just feel around for them you could turn it inside out with the pins in there but um the it could very easily snag um your fabric as you're doing so and the last thing you would want to do is when you're this closest to the end is you know snag your pretty project or accidentally put a hole in it or you know, try not to poke yourself, too, because you don't want to bleed on it. <laughs> Nobody wants a bloody apron, right? <laughs> Especially using white. All right, so there's a couple more floating around in here. Just going to find them all. There's one. I'm not doing a very good job of putting them in my dish. All right, I think I got two more in here. All right, so check your your uh, check both sides. Make sure you don't see any little metal pieces still in there. You've got all your pins pulled out. And then what we're gonna do is find that opening, that finger width opening, and I'm just gonna reach across to the other side. I'm gonna get my hands on that little sash and very gently, I'm going to use the sashes to tug the apron inside out. This is why you don't want that hold, hole to be too small um, because you, as you're trying to turn the bulk you know inside out you don't want to accidentally pop 
um, your stitches. If you do, don't stress out about it because we're going to add another detailed stitch around the outside edge. So, um, you know, you'll have a double layer of stitches inside and out. That's one of the reasons that these aprons are so sturdy. And if you do decide to sell these in your booth, make sure you mention to your clients, you know, they're extremely well made, they're double stitched. I sew them inside, you know, they're stitched on the inside and then again on the outside. I guarantee they'll last years to come. And that's, you know, my little spiel. Okay, so anyway, let's shake it out looking great already so now we're just going to take this we're going to iron it and then we're going to do that final stitch and we're going to be all done okay so here we have our apron and one thing i want to mention is you can see that the straps are nice and straight um, if we had not taken the time to line them up and pin them nice like nicely the way we did they may have shifted and when you stitch that inside stitch if they'd shifted you may end up with a strap that's all wonky like this um, so it's definitely worth it to take a little bit of extra time and tack them down real nice and neat even though it's kind of a pain in the butt to pull the pins out when it's inside out um, it's definitely worth it so what I'm doing is I'm taking my long pointy thing and I'm sticking it inside that hole that we just used to turn inside out and I'm doing just like we did with the sashes I'm gonna work my way around the outside edges pressing as I go just so we have the nice crisp seams all the way around the apron just make sure before you take this to the sewing table to do your final stitch that you don't accidentally leave your knitting needle inside the apron and sew it shut <laughs> I love doing the kids aprons because they're so small and easy this step when I make the larger adult size aprons as much as I love making them it's like by the time I've made a pile of them and I get to this last step of ironing I'm ready to just be done because they're they're a lot bigger um, and you really got to get your hand all the way in there to reach the seam on the other side but these little ones are just a piece of cake Alrighty, now I want to make sure, one, that it's nice and flat. I want to iron it on, take a look at and iron it on both sides. I want to make sure that my opening here, you know, I'm going to stitch this shut. I want to make sure that that lines up nicely so that when I stitch around this, I don't end up with, you know, um, a weird little patch or, or, um, or, you know, a spot that didn't get sealed shut all right this is looking real good so one last step and we're all done all right guys, we are on the last step. All we have to do is um, sew our little detailed stitch around the edges. And because I do sell these, um, I like to purchase um, these little labels um, that I then sew into my project. These ones I got, these sat and sew on labels from a company called mindforsure.com. I think she's actually in France. Um, I got these before COVID and they came really fast, but um, uh, you know, it might be a little bit different now. I don't know. But anyways, there's all kinds of people that make them. You can get them embroidered or printed. And what I do is I fold them in half. And then I'm in this little opening that where we turn it inside out is where I tuck my label to give it a nice little finished look. So um, just like we did with this one, I'm going to go uh, nice and slow and pay a lot of attention just so I have a nice clean little stitch and I am going to bring my stitch out fairly close to the edge here just because I want to make sure I get this sealed shut.
sure you keep your needle down when you're turning those corners. And just like before, um, you want to make sure that when you go across this top seam, you go nice and slow and make it nice and straight. Also, be mindful where your straps are. You don't want to accidentally stitch over top of one of them. I'm going to come all the way down over this opening one more time just because I want to make sure it's shut. And I back stitch just a little so my thread doesn't unravel. And there you go. We're all done. All we have to do now is snip the threads and we're ready to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here it is, the awesomely easy, ridiculously adorable, um, reversible children's apron. I hope you loved making this. I hope it was very easy for you. As you can see, we did it right. We got the back side with the uh, orange straps. Just go around and take a look at your, you know, your stitches. Sometimes they might get a little bulky like this and you may have some threads um, that you wanna snip or you, know, you may have a few little stray threads up and around the edges. Um, take a good look at it. And then all you gotta do is um, hang it in your booth and slap a price tag on it or wrap it up with a ribbon and give it as a gift. If you guys have any questions, please put them down um, in the comments. If you like this video, please hit the like button or subscribe. Um, I'll be having a men's barbecue apron tutorial coming down the road soon, a unisex one really that men or women can wear. But anyways, um, I'm glad I finally got this one out to you guys and I hope you're doing wonderful and hope you're enjoying spring as you can see i've got all my seedlings started and i've got some gardening videos coming down uh the line as well so take care you guys and have fun